waving one of her towards me. We have an AV pro here that can help me. Uh, anyway, uh, she had extra glasses with her so I can see. Otherwise, I would have to wing it. And I'm probably going to wing it anyway. Okay, uh, my name is Lori Skoog. I am 71 years old. I have been um, coming to the Senior Center for Chorus for many years. Gary and I were co-presidents in the past. And um, I want to welcome everybody here. First, I want to introduce the people, and then uh, I will tell you the format for the evening. That woman, the woman on the end that's got her back to us, <laughs> that's Hattie Hayen. She is a past uh, director of the Senior Center and has been a great member of our committee full of all kinds of information. Next to her, Jean, who was the town supervisor. So we have something from that end also. The lady in orange, Cora Schrader. <laughs> Cora has been coming to the senior center. <laughs> you you have a seat over here, Cora. Cora between us. Yeah. A rose between two roses. Um, Cora has been coming to the senior center for 12 years. She also has been in the senior chorus. She likes visiting other uh, centers and bringing information back to us. This. Everyone probably knows Chet Ferry. He's the bread man. And he is the king of paying it forward. This man has done more for more people than anyone I can think of. Yes. And last but not least is Rob Cardis, our town supervisor. I give him a lot of kudos for coming tonight. And just so everyone knows, I'm hoping that everyone will be very respectful throughout the evening. Uh, above board, very nice comments. We're interested in your input. And this is how the evening's going to go. I've done it all without glasses. I guess I didn't hear. Well, how did this committee start? Well, back in July, or maybe a little earlier, the hours changed for the senior center. And at the same time, close to the same time, Ricky, who is here tonight, retired so she could have a life <laughs> with her grandkids. When that happened, uh, many of the people who attend the Senior Center became very concerned. They were worried that something was up. Next, they called me and said, an appraiser's been here, something's happening. So. We decided, some of the people that are on this committee and in the community thought it would be a good idea to go to a town board meeting. We did that. We presented our case. Several people spoke. And afterwards, I met with Rob Cargis, who agreed to let us have a committee to come up with a proposal by October 15th that would uh, give them, the people on the town board, an idea of what we have in mind that we think would keep our center going and vital. So that's how it started. Now I want to give you just a few uh, quick facts, but first I'll tell you how the meeting's going to go. Each person on the panel will have an opportunity to speak about what they've been learning since the committee started. We're in about our fifth or sixth week. After that, um, I would like Rob, if he wants to say anything, I would like him to speak. After that, it will be time for questions, concerns. The panel will answer to the best of our ability based on what we've learned. Uh, I will tell you right up front, we really want to work with the town board. We want to be able to have a good dialogue so we can come up with a solution. And I hope that... Uh, even though you might be emotional about the Senior Center, that you're able to be very respectful in how the evening goes. Okay, so here are a few quick facts about the Senior Center. It was built with a HUD grant uh, 
around uh, the end of 79 and opened in 1980. The grant was for between $450,000 and $500,000. Since that time, two additions were added to the original building. In the DNC, someone found an article for me from 2005 that stated, in over a 20-year time period, the center members, the SSAI, raised $100,000 to upgrade the kitchen and landscaping and to help with expansion in the 90s, clearly demonstrating their deep commitment to the Sweden seniors and to keep the center open. It was uh, named as one of the top 100 in the country and has been nationally recognized. Over the past three years, participation has increased in many of our programs. Overall, it has increased. There's a poster over there that you guys can't see, but you can see later. I don't want to go into a lot of statistics and uh, things, but you can look at that later. Um, the bottom line is the baby boomers have arrived in Brockport. Um, the population 18 and under has been reduced by almost 600 between 2000 and 2010, and the senior population has increased, and now we are about 20% of the population of the town of Sweden. Um, okay. I think that's about it. So now what I would like to do is let the panel members have a few words to say, let Rob speak, and then open it up to you. We are going to be as brief as we can be, and if you are um, speaking and asking a question, two or three minutes at the max, because there are a lot of people who would like to speak, we will do our best to answer you. Uh, now I would like to introduce Jean Brooks. She will be our first person to speak. Thank you, Lori. Even being the second speaker, it, we still may have some overlap, and I hope you'll forgive me. 1980 was a banner year for the town of Sweden. It saw the opening of a wonderful new building for its senior citizens. Thanks to the vision of John Sedoma and its town board at the time, the doors opened on many new activities for older men and women. Through the years, the building has stood for enriching opportunities for its seniors. Each of the last three years, under the direction of Ricky Devon, have seen increasing participation in its activities. As recently as last, as recently as last week, 70 people turned out for a delicious baked potato lunch. 65 people had reservations for a luncheon. <laughs> I bet you don't know what the, that rest of the sentence is. <laughs> I don't myself. As recently as last week, 70 people turned out for, I read that, 65 people have reservations for a luncheon honoring the center's volunteers tomorrow. With over 60 members singing seniors are rehearsing weekly in this wonderful chorus under the direction of Mary Ellen Giese. So, is nothing wrong? Number one, the hours at the center have been reduced, leading to a drop in activity. Through coercion of the town board, many of the activities formerly at the senior center have been compelled to move to the rec center in, that is, Bridge, Tai Chi, Euchre, Bridges moved on its own. They didn't like it up there, so they've gone someplace else. And Pinochle, among other things. A variety of young adults have been placed, quote, in charge of the center. Their main responsibility seems to be to open and close the building and to answer the phone. Quilting and knitting are operating on their own. SSAI, which is our support group, is trying to fill the gap planning the bazaar with Joyce Henyon's help and direction, 
and Roz and Lou at the helm. Several tables of regulars still participate regularly. Plenty of conversation, pick up games of dominoes, wonderful goodies brought in from time to time by Jim Reynolds. Book club meets monthly still. Line dancing twice a week with Natalie in Nancy's sad absence. Lunch at $3 is a regular feature. Favorite, favorite meals draw more people. Lifetime assistance now shares lunches and center features. No one seems to mind. They're more than welcome. They're well supervised. They're a nice group of people. But trips are at a standstill. That's about my report. Thank you. All set, Cora? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I think that I need to say that <clears throat> I'm the one representative on the board that the town picked. So I may have a little bit different perspective, but I'm pulled in both directions. This is a wonderful building. I retired 12 years ago and came here and have enjoyed many of the activities over the years. I also participate at the community center where I enjoy silver sneakers and uh, the fitness center and other uh, areas up there that they have. So uh, I have to say that I, I would love to see this building stay. And one of the things that I have done for the committee is to visit other senior centers to see how they operate. And each one is unique. I went to the biggest, which is Greece, that has 96,000 people. No, not the center, the, the town. <laughs> the town, the town. <laughs> that would be huge. Yes, it would. It would. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's why I have Lori at my elbow. <laughs> but that, that would have been interesting, wouldn't it, to be seen there. Anyway, it is, uh, they have combined their senior center with their community center. And uh, the one thing I noticed there is the, it is the energy. Everyone, although most of the people, of course, I have to admit I'm almost 80, so everyone else is younger as far as I'm concerned. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome, Teresa. <laughs> the one thing that I noticed is how welcoming and how energetic are the young people that are there as assistants. And their director, too, is, is a very lovely lady that I didn't have the opportunity to meet. But Lori, I think you found her to be very opening and, and very uh, full of energy for the people. Yes. This was Greece. 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 And of course, it's down on Long Pond Road. It's part of the campus, which makes sense because as well as the community center, the town hall is there, the library is there. Uh, the public works is there, the courthouse is there, and right next to it uh, are whole, well, police are also there, right <laughs> next to the facility. It was interesting. When you come in the door, uh, it's very bright, it's a big area, and the uh, reception area is freestanding. And there are two people there ready to greet you and smiling. When I arrived, there was an older couple there talking with one of the representatives. I had more than stepped in the door than the representative that was behind the counter, the other one, said, may I help you? And came right over to greet me and asked what I was there for. Uh, it made you feel welcome as soon as you got there. Now, the one problem that I did see uh, is, although it is a handicapped friendly in that it has the automatic doors and it's ground level when you go in. It's a huge, huge building. And you do have to do some walking to get to where you want to go. When you come in to your left is the fitness center. You go a little further past the rec center, there's a small hallway that leads to the gymnasium. And then there is a hallways that get you to all the different parts of the center. And 
the actual uh, seniors do have their own room, uh, and it's on a smaller scale. This is we're, we're quite large for our size here. We have really quite a wonderful place. Uh, they have round tables. They have square tables for playing cards. So that they have, a, and then right next to that is where the lunch area is, and just beyond that is where the kitchen is. <laughs> the one thing that is interesting is that most of the inner walls there are partitioned paneling doors like this that you can just slide back. So you, the gym is the same way. It's a huge gymnasium. Uh, there's a walking area around the top or running area, whichever you prefer. It's barricaded by a very nice fence. You can look down, but no one can hit you with anything from the gym. <laughs> And they do have an elevator as well as stairs to get up there. Yeah, I'm going on too long. Lori's giving me the, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, it seems to be working successfully for them. Before, they had two senior centers that they have closed, and people are willing to come to the community center. Now, the opposite, I wanted to get something that was more in size to what we are. And so I chose Ogden as my other senior center to go to. And they definitely, they have two separate facilities. They have the community rec center, and then the uh, senior center is actually a converted Victorian home that has an addition on the back that's a nice big assembly room. And I've been there before, but I specifically went there to meet their director and to see who was attending and what was going on. And the key to all of this, both places, whether you're big or you're small, is having a vibrant director that's there to make to control and work with your programs. And that's the one thing that I picked up from that. The other thing that I picked up at Ogden is that the town supervisor meets once a month with people at the senior center and has lunch with them and discusses whatever problems it is and talks with each one individually. So there is an energy that we don't have in this By the way, Cora, she's a full-time supervisor. Well, so I'm sure she that. is. Yeah. Yes, I, I am. I'm trying to show the positive things. No, it's, I just yeah. no, I'm, here. No, you don't have to remind me that. I understand okay. that, Rob. Right. And we are the smallest. Yeah. That I think people need to understand that of all the towns that have a senior center, we are the smallest. And to have one this, this size and with the number of programs that we've had over the years and still do between here and the community center, uh, I think is pretty great. The programs that they have at both are very similar. We used to have more here when there was more people. Now, I started here 12 years ago when I retired and we did have a very vibrant director and there was a lot going on and I was here in part of when this became nationally recognized. And, uh, since then, when that particular director left, it hasn't had the type of leadership that would have made this to continue to be as vibrant as it had been. So if, if it's possible to save the senior center, I'm for it and I'll do whatever I can. And having Rob, uh, uh, knowing Rob, I know that his heart is, if we can get this going so that it's economically advisable for the town, he would be for it as well. Uh, what happened is everything changed when the community center came on board because here we are, a small community with most of the funds, extra funds going to the, to the senior center. Now they're divided between the senior center and the community center. That was a gift, but, you know, it came without any dollars to maintain it, to up, improve it, to update it. So it was necessary to do that. And I think it's wonderful that we have an area like that for the whole town. But I also think with the senior population that we have here, that it's wonderful to have the senior center as well. And so I'm hoping that, uh, well, I certainly know that I don't have the energy that Lori does. <laughs> when I get depressed, I call her and she cheers me up. And I don't want to be going on so long. I know they want me to, to keep it short. But I think it's very important to understand that this is, the town is open to keeping the senior center open if it can be figured out how to do that. 
And so that's why we're hoping that all you people here will have ideas, ideas of where it'll never be self-sustaining financially. But there are ways, I know, that you can get grants and other things to help us to supplement what the town can give for the Senior Center. So that's one of the reasons we're having this tonight. And Lori, I know I go on and on and on, and you've allowed me to do that, and I appreciate it. And now I will close down, but I, I would like to see both places vibrant and working together. And and thank you for next we have the bread man who's the bread man uh, I meant bread to give it away but let's that's not why I'm here uh, I've lived in this community for 40 years my wife and I raised our three children here, and I believe in Sweden, in the village. I lived on King Street for many years, and yes, I was awakened a few nights and lost to some lawn furniture, but I loved it. It was a wonderful place, and we know the energy that's in this community. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here, and I believe you're here because you care, and you care, you want to see the senior center prosper and be open and, and involve as many people as we can. And that's why I wanted to be part of this committee, is because I've seen senior centers all over Western New York, because my, my work with Brett takes me there. But I've seen senior centers work in chorus and it very well. It's the spirit that we need to put the energy back in this building, because none of us want to see it go. No. None of us want to see it be less involved. And we all have to say that we care, and I know you do, you wouldn't be here. And even though we may not agree on everything, there's one thing we agree on. This is a community where everybody cares for each other and shows kindness to each other and wants to make sure we have the best and the highest quality of life we can. But you know, we're realists. We as a committee know that we can't do this alone. And we've also been saying that if we do this as a committee, guess what? We have to commit to helping to make this place as prosperous and as vibrant and as involved as we can possibly make it. And we're all willing to commit time and energy to do that. We want you to do that too. So we're, I'm going to stop in a minute, but I want you to know we need your ideas. We need your love for this community to surface. And we want you to help us to make this the, the, the facility and uh, have it reach its full potential as a senior center is that we all believe it's special. And it's a place that we want to save and preserve and be vibrant again. So, and I'm going to stop. And I want you to know I did bring bread. But I only bought 52 loaves. So you better hurry. Thank you. Thank you, Chet. Our last speaker from the panel is Hanny. And then it will be Rob. You forgot me. Yes. <laughs> you forgot me. I'll sit in your chair. Oh. So much has been said already, and there are many of you here that I know. And one of the things that some of you remember was when I was director here in, in this center, standing at the microphone at that end with many volunteers every day, uh, you know, doing the announcements for me. And the one fun story, which is quick, and then we'll get on to serious things. Each senior pronounced my name in a different way. You know, my real name is Hanny Laurie Hayen, and you know, Hammy Hayen. But when lovely Helen Parrish, who I love, came up and called me to add on to her announcement, she said, and here's Heine. <laughs> she really said that. So those are the kind of smiles and laughs we hope we'll have after all of you have read the, uh, the comp compilation of all the suggestions that our committee has come up with in that handout we gave you. We certainly recognize there have been changes since that time then when, when you know, we would have 100 activities per month or we had a Yesterday Youngsters Club that had 100 members and they had a potluck dinner once a month. And I always worked late, as my husband can attest, and I used to go out there and look and they were so sweet to me, they'd let me have a piece of pie early. So that, that, that organization is no longer here, but Elderberry Club is. And those were the seniors at the beginning. There was a different focus back at that time. Some of that focus is still here, but 
changes need to be made. Things have changed in 30 years. And it's not just here at this senior center, but it's centers across the country. The, the, you had first, they called the GI group of seniors, and then you had the 50s group, and then you have the baby boomers, and on we go. So there have been a number of changes. Many seniors are working longer. The widows that used to come here when I was here, some didn't know how to write a check, didn't know how to drive. We had more money then from the county, from the state, from the federal government with the focus on the nutrition program where we averaged 55, 60 people per day. Now those numbers are greatly reduced. So we're looking at this magnificent facility. And at a meeting on July 22nd, a number of you were there, we asked this town board, would you let us convene a committee? They said yes, that we did. And now is the next step. We've come up with suggestions, and they allow us till October 15th to come up with recommendations. All of you are a part of this process, because you will be making some suggestions, ideas, or things that you feel will make it work. But we have to do it with everyone, with the town board. We need to challenge them, as we would, that we would like to be given one year for this committee, an expanded committee, to come up with some solutions. And that's where we are at this point. I'm on board because I was loyal back then, and I'm loyal now to keep it going. Thanks. Thank you. Thank everyone. Uh, I do want to thank Lori for getting the committee together here. We talked prior to that. Uh, forming that committee, and we did. I met a lot of you at uh, one of the board work sessions that came, and we had a lot of back and forth then. And then there was a little bigger crowd the next time at the town board meeting where you got to throw out some different suggestions and ideas. So that spurred this group to say, Look, we can come up with something. And I kind of pushed it in a way too because uh, we're at a financial crossroads here. We know everybody, most people know here, know that government doesn't ever make a profit and that we're not expecting to do that. The only difference between the town government and state and federal is we can't print money like they can. <laughs> so we have to have enough money to keep a center like this viable. The other thing I struggle with too a little bit, and again I'm being frank with everybody here, uh, I am the baby boomer generation, I'll be 60 next year, and our mindset is different than it was 30 years ago, as Hanny said. So maybe that's the thing that would help bring that in to being a change in what we think about as a, as a senior center. Maybe even the name senior center isn't the right thing to say anymore because it has a certain connotation to it. We have an idea for that. You know, good. <laughs> and, you know, it, it might be just something like that that would spark a change in what goes on here. Uh, there, and as she said, we're going to listen to ideas that you may have tonight, and they're going to uh, collate them all together. I offered them at last night's board meeting to come to our work session on October 14th to see what's doable and what's viable and what's affordable for everybody here. So with that, uh, I'll shut up now and uh, let Lori take over when you guys speak. So, thank you. Thank you, Brad. I hope, I hope that you had a chance to read this dissertation we passed out. Yeah. There are a lot of people who uh, would like to speak tonight. And I think what I'll do is I will put the microphone out there. Actually, I can take it off here. If you would come forward a little bit, I can pass the mic to you. You don't have to come over here. Um, there is a person that I want to ask, uh, several of you have signed up to ask questions and obviously this can't go on all night so we've got to be uh, uh, efficient. So the first person I would like to call is, oh I've got the wrong glasses on, <laughs> oh my gosh, um, Chris, is it Chris Green? Chris Green? Christine. Okay. Christine. Okay. I'll put the mic over here if you would like to use it. Yeah, you can just put it on there. Well, I didn't expect to be the first person to get up and speak. Um, I, I just want to put this 
just, I'll be very brief. I have, my, my interest in the senior center is threefold. First, as a future senior, not too far in the future. Um, I've lived in this village directly across the street now for 13 years, and I love it here. Um, I want to, my neighbors and I joke about paying a crosswalk when I get a little bit older so my husband and I can just walk over here and do our thing. Um, so having this place continue to exist and be vibrant and viable is important to me. And, and frankly, I hope more of my peers and younger continue to um, invest in the Senior Center, both as volunteers and in many other ways, because I think, um, I hope to convince many of my friends, um, particularly in the Moms Club, that this is our, our Moms Club is going to be here someday, right? Um, second, it's a now. Yeah. Um, next, I want to address as, as uh, a neighbor. The Senior Center is um, my neighborhood. I, I know that isn't true for everybody, but as a neighbor, every single day, I see people walking to this building. If we continue to move um, programs out of this building, we continue to make Brockport just another subdivision where we have to drive everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we don't all want, I know no, none of us want that to happen. Um, I believe in having programs in the village. So um, as a future senior, as uh, a neighbor, and, and just as a community member, I mean, we have to support each other. And I'm getting a little flustered here because, like I said, I didn't think I was going to be the first person to speak. I didn't have anything um, really concrete to say. But I, I just really, really want this place to exist further, and I, I want to help in any way I can. So. Here's a quick aside. Here's an idea for the name of the Senior Center. The Erie Canal House, a gathering place for this community. Does that sound better? Yeah. Okay, how about Jean Pareshi? Would you like to come and say a few words wherever you are? Okay, you can be off the cuff. Oh, and also, you know, you're allowed, in addition to making comments, you're allowed to ask questions if you want. Uh, okay. Well, uh, off the cuff, guys. Uh, I think there's a little bit bigger picture uh, beyond the senior center. And by that, uh, I'll just give my own personal experience. And... Uh, I think my own personal experience echoes itself many times throughout the community. Uh, it isn't just the senior center, but the town of Sweden itself goes far beyond its borders. Your influence goes much beyond what you may be talking about. Uh, let me try to sum this up. Uh, I live on almost the extreme northwest corner of Monroe County in the town of Hamlin. And uh, I've been there 54 years, same house. <coughs> and uh, my wife and I, my wife Carol and I, have had three children, went through the Brockport school system. And in those 54 years, I think I would estimate reasonably accurate that 60 to 65 percent of our family business has been in the township of Sweden. So. I don't know, maybe I might qualify as an honorary resident. <laughs> but that's about it. I think, I think you've got to think a little bit beyond just the Sweden side. Because uh, you, you have a lot of things in this township that attract people beyond your borders. That's about it. Thank, Thank you. you. Jean is also one of the uh, chorus members with the Sweden Senior Singers. Okay, um, Sybil. I can't read your last Reich. name. Reich. Reich. I volunteered to be part of the group with no questions. Okay, no questions. No problem. 
Uh, is it Jody Waldock? Okay, gotcha. Wrong. I guess I needed my own glasses. <laughs> okay, how about Carol Tate? Sorry, I've always that. got something to say. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong column. I'm sorry. Well, I have a question, actually. My question is, um, I know they've talked about how attendance for meals and stuff being down, you know, has decreased, but some people in this community come here every day and it's their only hot meal of the day, whether they live alone and have physical issues or whatever, or, you know, can't, aren't able to cook for themselves or whatever. And if the center were to close and things were to go up on the hill, what would happen to the nutrition program? And then I also found out today, which I was not aware of, that the van to transport people is part of the nutrition program. So if there's no nutrition program, there's no van. I know a lot of these people, I've asked about taking the vans because I'm not driving anymore right now. And sometimes my husband is busy. So, you know, I might have to use the van sometime. I don't know. A little far to walk from White Road. So, I don't know if, you know, there's any answers to that question at this point. I, I can't see that going on in that cafeteria up there. It's not conducive to, you know, with people in wheelchairs and stuff like getting in and out of it and stuff. So, that was my question. Thank you, Carol. Rob, do you have any kind of a response to that? I don't know the answer. I don't really know. I, I mean, you're right, Carol, that the participation has dropped considerably, and I think Hanny kind of noted it's really a carryover program from the 60s from LBJ, and it's never ended, like most federal programs that never end. And it's not saying that it should, but again, it's if the population shifted as to who wants to take place, have a meal here or whatever. And I, I, if we did continue on with the band comes with it, but we are the only center in Monroe County that offers it every day. Most are two or three days a week. Can you guys hear it, Rob? Okay, good. Good voice, Rob. So, uh, that's all I can answer on it for now, but, but it's a good question. Uh, Marilyn Lafferty? I don't need a mic. <laughs> okay, Marilyn. You got a pretty good turnout here tonight. That's encouraging. Yeah. Uh, I was the president of the SSAI just before Lori came in, in fact. Uh, I was here the year that we got national certification. We had 200 people at the uh, celebration dinner. So it's, it is possible. But on the other side, when I first became involved with this center, the, the attendance was slowly dwindling even then, which is, I don't know, how long ago were you president, Lori? I don't remember. Thank I you. Seven or eight years. Yeah, well, I was one year before that. Yeah. And Linda Hale and I got together, and we wrote a letter, a form letter, to every single senior person in the town of Sweden explaining our programs and giving them a ticket for a free lunch. We got six responses and we sent out over 200 letters. So what you're going to do, Rob's heard this before from me, and what you're going to do is have to find something that works. I don't know what it is, you don't know what it is right now. Uh, is it possible? I'm sorry I didn't know about the committee meetings because I might have stuck in my two cents worth then. We'll, we'll take you now. Uh, <laughs> and I think you guys are thinking too small for one thing. I, it's easier to raise a million dollars than it is five. <laughs> there are grants all over the place. I know somebody who, that's their business is writing grants. 
if, if, if this place could be kind of put on hold for six months or a year till a committee got together to try to get some grants, why couldn't the Senior Association, which has done most of the work, they're already a nonprofit organization and an incorporated one. So those are two big things that have to be done if this outfit stands on its own. Whether or not the town would A, be willing to lease this place to the association, sell it to the association, don't tell me you can't get the money because there are grants all over the place. I mean, uh, six or seven years ago, Walmart gave this place a $5,000 gift to put on the dinner for the, uh, the thingamabob that we got for certification. And if you can get one big corporation, you can get a dozen. So maybe you ought to start thinking a little bit bigger or coming at it from a different angle. The town is not going to continue to subsidize something that really only is a benefit to probably two dozen people on a steady basis. I know the chorus is here, and that's, that's a great organization. Uh, I know the lunches have been down as low as four or five people, too. Uh, Carl was talking about the Ogden Senior Center. I go over there quite a bit. They are associated with the town of Ogden, but not controlled by or completely financed by. They're controlled and by, it's kind of like a trust. It's a, called a Shaharos something or other. And they're the ones that handle it. Those people over there can use that building any time of day or night. That's because the town isn't liable for anything that happens. I said to the director Friday, you mean you got keys that people can just walk in this place? Yeah, if there's something we want to do, we can come here. There's probably 10 keys out. I said, nobody's ripped the joint off? She said, we've never had a problem with 10 keys floating around, they haven't lost a teaspoon. Uh -huh. So there are a whole lot of other things that can be done. I don't see any push buttons up at the community center yet, Mr. Carter. I don't see any uh, delineated parking or doors. You know, there's a lady that comes in to play euchre on Tuesday afternoon, who has to have somebody go with her to the bathroom because she's got a walker. She can't open the door to the ladies' room. How is that nice? No. Yeah. So there are some things that got to be done up there, but this is a beautiful spot. Right now, it doesn't need renovations or new paint. Probably needs a leak and a roof fix, but. <laughs> So that's basically all I've got to offer is, I think you've got to think a little broader and be realistic about the whole thing. As if your kids are paying taxes, if you're paying taxes here, you don't want to pay taxes and just dump them down a rat hole with no bottom. And unfortunately, maybe that's what it is. But there are ways to keep this place going and vibrant and involving the younger people in the community. Thank you, Christine, for being up here. Because there are people that can look farther ahead than beyond the nose and their face and see that where walks her today going to walk with me tomorrow. Marilyn, oh. are you available tomorrow at 3 o'clock? What's tomorrow? Thursday. I'm playing cards. <laughs> David Hale.
Thanks. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the bridge group. Um, small group. Uh, we've been averaging four tables. When we were thrown out of here unceremoniously in July, we tried the rec center. It is not physically uh, accessible by at least a third of our members, one of whom is here. Um, and so uh, we have now relocated to the Seymour Library, which is not uh, always available for things like the library's book sale, which I hope everyone will patronize. Um, and so we've been in Plan D has been the basement of the, uh, the assembly room of the Presbyterian Church. We really hope you can find a way to bring us back to this building. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, David. Have I left out anyone that signed up to speak? I don't think so. Now, is there anyone else who has a question, a comment? Please come up. I don't need to come up. I just have a question. I didn't know if we were allowed to sponsor someone for like a liaison or you do it with the board or that. Are we allowed to sponsor anyone to be a liaison between the town and the senior center? The question is, are we allowed to sponsor a liaison between the seniors and the seniors and the I wanted to um, say that Cora Schrader. Okay. All right. And and I don't understand really quite what you mean by sponsoring. Oh, okay. A nomination for a liaison. Okay, gotcha. And the other thing was, I think we should all gang up on Ricky and make her come back. <laughs> she said, "Did you hear that? We should all gang up on Ricky and never come back." That sounds pretty good. <laughs> Question. Uh, um, I just want to say some one thing that I've been I lived in Rochester all my life, but when I came to Brockport, I met a lot of nice people. I enjoy it. My mother used to go here. And I don't want to see the center ever close because there's a lot of people out there that would like to come and try to join us. So we can't, you know, no transportation. Thank you. Thank you. And I have a message. Um, Beth Walker, um, her kids, one lives in New York City, and I'm not sure where the other lives, but they have both contacted me and said how much their mom loves coming to this center and if there's anything they can do to help they would but the drive was too far from Stephen in New York City to get here tonight okay Louis Louis is the uh, president of the uh, senior association uh, in uh, response to having a liaison from the town we did have one Mike Myers was with us for two years. He was fantastic. Uh, Kevin Johnson, who is now uh, a judge, he was with us, and he came uh, occasionally to the SSI meetings. And uh, since him, there has been nobody assigned from the town to take his spot. And so we're without a representative from the town board as we did have uh, with Mike and Kevin. Rob, is there a possibility of reinstating that liaison? Sure. Sure, I don't see what the movie. Okay, did, Rob said sure. He doesn't know why there couldn't be a liaison. So. And okay. vice versa. People can come to town board meetings. I love to see crowds I've like been this. there. You've been there many times, but you know what the usual crowd is. Yeah. Usual crowd. Okay, uh, in the back. Yes. Do you need a microphone? I don't think so. Yes. <laughs> they can't hear you back there. He's going around the corner. <laughs> Maybe he'll sing his song my way. <laughs> that would be perfect for tonight. Okay, we're at See you my way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't get under the speaker. Step back. You're underneath. Don't go back that way. There's a speaker up there. Oh. Look what I did. I got water all over. Oh, the. Uh, 
recreation that they have for the kids costs, which I fully support because I, have, my wife and I have three grandchildren that play soccer, use the facilities, fantastic. It costs a lot of money. It costs a lot of money to keep it up. Many, I don't know how many thousands of dollars a year. 600,000. But th they get all kinds of money for this, for the kids, which I fully support. But they don't have enough for us. Anyone else who has a question or would like to comment? I'd like to Could you please come and use this so everyone can hear? And could you say your name, please? Yes, my name is Bob Shear, and I just recently moved to this community. I've only been here three weeks. I moved to this community for one reason. There's a lot of stuff to do here. I've used the community center, and I've used this center. I was here for the potato. Well, it was good. My wife has volunteered here. My wife is going to be at the volunteer luncheon. <laughs> this community needs to support this, not only with all you people being here, but you need to support it financially. Whatever it is that we need to do, we need to do it. All the senior citizens here spend a lot of time trying to think what they're going to do with themselves, and I think they, this is one of the places that they, there's things that they can do here. There's things I can do at the community center, not just here, but at the community center as well. Uh, I like this community. I, I bought property here because I wanted to live here. So in the three weeks I've been here, I've been at the community center and I've been here. So you really can't close these places down. I just really wanted to keep going. We've got to keep it going. If it takes, if it takes somebody to contribute $1,000 a year, I'll contribute $1,000 a year. Oh, well, we'll say <laughs> No, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm sure somebody, there was a, at one time there was a proposal, people to contribute $25 a year to be a member of the community center, and it, I guess nobody signed up or it was a voluntary thing. We need to get together and we need to do something, and if it's financial, it seems to be mostly financial, and financial is, let's do, I mean, let's contribute some money. I'd be the first one to contribute a thousand dollars. In response to that, uh, our committee's looking into all the things that you've talked about. Uh, there are many things that uh, other other centers are doing. They charge fees. They might have a membership fee, like you're you're talking about. And I think what we need to do is. You need a qualified, interested, enthusiastic director to coordinate all this kind of stuff. And until you have someone in a leadership role, and that's what I loved about the Grease Center when we went. There was such enthusiasm from the person that uh, we had taking us around, it would make you want to go there. We need more of that here. We also, Marilyn, we also understand about grants and the bigger picture. I think that um, if it could be my way, I would like the uh, Senior Center to be a permanent part of the budget for $150,000 a year. And then I think it would behoove the seniors, if we want to keep this place open, we have to come up with ways to generate money. It's a uh, community service. It's not a factory. We are not expected to float $150,000. But I think we need to make an effort. Uh, last year, uh, from various sources, uh, we contributed $18,000 plus to the town. Uh, I think we can do better than that. I think that we need people at the helm who are interested in looking for grants Figuring out ways, I, I know, being on the Art and aesthetic, Aesthetics Committee, we have raised twelve and $14,000 in an hour and a half with auctions. We've done it three times. 
There are things that you can do to generate money, but the town can't expect us to come up with the whole thing. I don't think that they do either. I think they know this is a community service and they want us to really make an effort to help keep it open. I mean, our goal, I mean, we want to work with them. We want to have uh, more, more conversations with them. Uh, it's silly not to be on the same side, and that's something in this community that does not happen enough. I mean, I have friends from the town, I have friends from the village. It's like the Hatfields and McCoys with government. I mean, we cannot get our crapola together. And I think it's time to work for community, community first, and all of you guys and the people who care? I mean, the people who live here are generous. They uh, are volunteers. They have some money. They they are at the Welcome Center. They're at the food shelf. They're at Morgan Manning. They're doing all kinds of stuff. We deserve, as seniors, to have a space. We absolutely deserve it. Any other questions? Sally. Sally. What Sally I'm Tomato. Hearing, what I'm hearing is that the kids get fully funded with nobody complaining. And somehow it changes when it comes in here. Why? Okay, she said it seems that the kids get fully funded and when it comes to the senior center, it's not happening and why? Brad, do you want to answer? Well, I, I I don't have the perfect answer that you want to hear for that, but there's no doubt that seniors participate at the other place that never come here, too. And we're not doing it just for the kids of the community. I've heard that already a few times. Obviously, the schools spend an enormous amount of money compared to us on children around here. And, that, and I don't want that to make this an us versus them thing. I think Lori has that point out there a few times. If we, we should be able to work together. You should be able to bring youth down here too. Why, why does this have to be segregated to just everybody over 70 years old? I don't think we want that. We don't either. So all those things could help. Uh, and that's all I have to say about that right now. And I think, see, the most important part of this whole thing tonight is to have dialogue. And until we're communicating, I don't know how it's possible to work together for a common goal. We need to be able to communicate and not be defensive. Yes? i got to say one more thing. Okay. <laughs> I'm Teresa Sweeney. Hi, Teresa. And I, like I said, I moved to Rockport. But I wanted to some place to go to meet new friends and to enjoy, you know, the day. Because nobody wants to be step home and, you know, doing anything. So I come here and then we, I volunteer. I try to help other people. We play cards or we knit or do, you know, just sit and talk. And we enjoy it. But when we don't have no place to go and we don't get, can't get around because then I'm dry, I have to depend on um, motor, medical motors to, to bring us, you know, to our the center. And we enjoy it. But we just want to know why, what's up and what's going to happen, you know, and hopefully we'll, we'll find out. We, we will definitely we, find we're out. We're not blaming you guys. You know, you're trying your best, but we got to, we're, you know, we're not getting any younger. I'm sorry. Just to find out. You know, it's very nerve-wracking. Well, I can tell you that we've been out to dinner with some friends, and here's an example. Our good friend said, I would never go to that senior center. And his wife said, yeah, we would never go to that senior center. And um, it definitely has motivated me to, along with this committee, think of things that would bring you here. What if we had a Euchre tournament or a Bridge tournament or a Master Gardener Symposium? Or what if we, we had um, road trips to go see your favorite baseball game doing a double header? Or uh, what if we had kids coming in here, you tell me, I'll tell you. You teach me how to use my phone and my computer, and I'll teach you how to make an apple pie. Uh, what, what if, what if uh, the bread man uh, got a, a bit, he doesn't know this. Uh, he got a business going here with our seniors, making bread to sell com commercially. We sell cookies. We have sold cookies here. They are phenomenal. We clean the place out. 
they're good. I mean, we can think of all kinds of different innovative things to do, and all we need to do is have the opportunity to show the town that we can do this. And that means we need a director, we need our hours restored, and we need innovative programming. Right. And that's what we need, yes. Um, there's something that I noticed because I went to the board meeting, you know, to support our group. When I went to the town hall, I couldn't help but notice that on the front desk there were cookies that were made here. Oh. That the town the town of Sweden building was selling and because that group used to meet at one o'clock. Now we no longer have the baking club. Grandma and Grandpa's baking. But I couldn't help but notice when I went to that last meeting that they were selling them at the desk of the town hall. And, and that is something that is very missed by the chorus because we would buy every cookie they made on Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs> Any more comments? Yes. Um, I was wondering, and maybe this has already been said and I just missed it, but could they make this a community center? I know we have the rec center, but when this place was started two years, I think, before, I know I was less than 40, and I was 40 in 1980, so I was younger than that, and junior women's needed a representative. I came from junior women's. There was the town assessor, there was John Sedoma, there was Connie Honig that had suggest she was handicapped, suggestions for for the handicap, they had the community involved in building this. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want too. And so, if we can get more, like it was so great that Christine mentioned that she's a neighbor in the neighborhood and wanting this because someday she's going to be older. But if they could just somehow get a spirit for not, we're for us, but for everybody, be for everybody. And, and we're for the community. We're on it the same like page, boy. That. We're on the same page with that. It's some, Terry. I'm getting old. <laughs> we, all, we all are. I'm Terry Carbone. I am a senior citizen also. I just first wanted to thank Lori, the committee, Gary, um, Bob, for this venue and uh, all the work you put into it. I mean, it's, it's awesome. What, what I hope does not happen, and I advocate for children, is that we don't turn against children programs versus senior programs. People move to this community because of what we provide for children. An outstanding school district, outstanding athletic programs for the youth, and the senior center. This community is full of highly sophisticated seniors. Highly sophisticated. They basically run our community. Um, I believe, Marilyn came up with some awesome ideas. I believe that's the direction, and what you're heading in is we have to move in a direction way outside the box if we want to keep this center open. It has to be for things way beyond the traditional senior type things. It has to be sophisticated. It has to involve other parts of the community. And it has to generate funds. I mean, there are ways to generate funds, foundations, um, maybe people, you know, one man already said he donate $1,000. I would donate $1,000. I, I bet you could come up with, it's $2,000. Um, I bet we could come up in this community uh, with enough donations, and if it is a foundation or is it tax deductible, we are an, uh, tax exempt. Uh, okay, but if this turned into a tax deduction for people to donate their thousand dollars to, right? You could you could pay for your director in a very short time, I believe. Would you like to be a <laughs> <laughs> I have enough to be in charge. You just have like the school board. I don't think you want that. <laughs> you newly elected school board member. The other thing bottom line is is that we want to keep building Brockport so that young families move here. Retirees stay here. 
and that our tax base keeps building. To put the onus on one organization, village, town, whatever, is, is a lot to ask for in this very you know, difficult time. But there is money out there beyond our school taxes. And I think there's you know, some very smart people sitting right here that you know, can carry on. And I'd be glad to help out in any way I can. I just don't want to be in charge of anything. <laughs> but, um, so I think the positive focus, as Chet started out with, is the way we need to go to continue it. And I, I do think and would appreciate some time to you know, maybe get that ball rolling. Sounds like you're really started. Thank you, Terry. Anybody else? Okay. wine tastings, uh, family reunions. Yeah. People need to think more about coming here and using the facility. It's really a great one. Somebody else, yes. Can't hear back there. Could you come up and go for it? Uh, and we'll tell you what that young man said after this guy speaks. Your name? Mark Christensen, uh, two questions. One, Lori, if you could explain your goal as committee uh, in a black and white term. And Rob, could you explain what you mean when you come to a crossroad? Does that mean one year from now, you pull the plug on this and it's over with? Uh, if you could elaborate on what you mean by the crossroad. Thank you. Well, we want to keep the center open. Uh, we also agree with the young man in the back. This is a great facility for people of all ages, and I see no reason why we shouldn't promote it that way. Um, I also think that the senior center should not be exclusively the place for all senior activities. There might be some more active activities that are more appropriate uh, up on the hill at the rec center. And that's no problem with us. We also uh, want to look into partnerships, sponsorships, grants. We want to look into what kind of reasonable fees we could come up with. How can we market this place? An off-the-wall idea, I had a call from a friend whose uh, uh, brother-in-law retired as a chef. He said, wow, uh, do you know what an incubator is? He said, that kitchen is fantastic. There are some uh, chefs and, and students uh, that are in culinary programs that would give their eye teeth to rent that space after hours so they could start working on things. I mean, we have probably 50 ideas. We just need to have a chance. Um, and we are hoping that that's what we get. We would like to prove that we can be innovative enough to get more people to come. I don't expect that everyone in this room is going to come to the re uh, senior center on a regular basis, but I'll bet if I have some good activities, you might come to something. And it might be a special event or a trip or, or a bridge tournament, whatever it is. I bet if I made dinner, you might come. Um, and I've done many dinners here. And we would get 125 plus people because 
They liked our cooking, right? We've had an Oktoberfest. We've had all kinds of things. We need to get back to that kind of stuff. Um, I, I believe we are all very enthusiastic, and I have to give you a message. We have a committee member that's not here, Harry Shifton. Harry Shifton uh, never comes to the Senior Center. And you know, we are so glad to have someone like that because we want to know what it would take to get Harry to come to the Senior Center. And so he's been a great part of our committee. And he couldn't be here tonight, but he is so enthusiastic, I cannot tell you. He can't wait. He wants us to have an advisory board yesterday to get going on this. But first we need to know that we're going to be open. So, um, any more questions? Oh, Rod has to respond. Uh, what I meant by the uh, crossroads, and maybe that was the wrong choice of words, but I'll stick by it. Every year, as you know, and I've been on the town board for 21 years now, and the supervisor just for 10 months, uh, we are in a growing community here. We built uh, six homes last year, and the year before that I think it was three, the year before that it was two. Uh, so we struggle with it, and, I, and many people are surprised by that, because they always think, oh, it's, it's, everything's growing, right? there's more development than that, but it really isn't. And, and that affects everything we can do as far as the town. If, I, I, I'm telling you right now, if this was a growing community the way east side community is, the town of Webster, which built 240 something homes last year, you probably wouldn't be here talking about this because there'd be so many things going on. And, and uh, I'm not saying we can turn that around tonight, but what I'm saying is that as your board, you're looking closely as to what we can do to make sure that we can maintain a lot of the things we, we do. And we were at, at a loss here because we didn't see the support here, although it's changed somewhat now because of this. Uh, but there was a lot of people, I asked a lot of people, including my own parents who are over 80, who's never been here, and say they don't want to go to a senior center. And even previous uh, board members who are all in their 80s, I'm talking, do they come here? Gene's the exception, the supervisor, but they come here, no. So can, if we can change that, and I can't stress that once again, and I thank Terry for this, to what to say, that I don't want this to become us versus them, the youth versus the old. It has to be the whole community that's doing a lot of things. This is really just a building. We're all human beings. This could, you know, blow away in a hurricane tomorrow and we'd have to stick together and do things. And we all know we've had crisis around here with a lot of uh, weather-related issues, less than other parts of the country for sure. But I, I would be more enthusiastic if we if did all see crowds turn out like this for a lot of things that we do. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to the future of that. But that, I hope that explains it somewhat, that the things I struggle with, again, having seen for 20 years, so this place has been here for 31 years, I've seen two-thirds of it and seen how it's changed and what happens. And I was the one that supported originally the kitchen on there, which was $100,000. And yes, the SSI helped out with that, but we got a grant from Senator Maziars. And then we built this addition that you guys are in, another 25-something thousand dollars, which doesn't seem like much today, but it was a lot of money then to make it bigger because we saw all the things that could be done. And then all of a sudden, the shift took place. So I, I'm, I'm hoping that what I hear tonight here, and can maintain too, because it's easy to get rah, rah, rah here with a group, and then we all go home, turn on the TV, and then no one cares about it anymore. It, we got to stay together and uh, think about what can be done. Anybody else? Oh, oh, let me first tell you what that young man said, um, if I can remember. Uh, he, can you come and tell them? They didn't, they didn't hear you and they want, want to know. Okay. Where are you? Like to know what you said. All right. Hello there. My name is Jack Merrick. I'm 16 years old, so obviously I'm not retired. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, I, I sit over here and I'll tell it again. My uh, grandfather recently passed away a year ago, and uh, my grandmother is a widow, and I was driving around with her today. I don't have my license, so she kind of helps me out with that. <laughs> and uh, when we were driving past, I said, Yeah, you know, supervisor car just asked me to come here. She said, Oh, what is this? It's a senior center. 
and said, you know, why don't you go there? Well, she gave some excuses. I, do I believe them? I don't know. <laughs> Either way, and I think it's more because of the name, but as everyone else here has said, you know, I feel like if you had a different change of name, like something a little bit more brighter and <laughs> yeah, stuff like that, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say that. A lot of these people are pretty young here, so. <laughs> but I feel if you had a different change of name, like you said, you could add you know, wine tastings, other things. Yeah, yeah. I support that. You know, that's a really good thing. You know, I'd probably try to get my grandmother here <laughs> eventually, but. Yeah. What, what made you come here? Uh, Supervisor Carter just okay. asked me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very interested in what goes on at the local politics. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. That's all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> Come up so everyone can hear you. Okay, tell us. You know, one time when I first came here, they can't hear you. They can't hear you, I'm sorry. But when we first came here, we had an awful lot of friends here that are not here now. But the thing is, they had such wonderful programs. They had uh, all kinds of skills that they, different people that were able to teach it. They had wonderful meals. And then they farmed out everything. And who knows to give an order, say if you were coming for lunch and in the habit of coming, I don't know two weeks from now if I feel like having to pay the salad. You know, why should you have to farm that out when you have the facilities right here? Everything, they're just, uh, they had the volunteers, good volunteers at one time. I don't know what happened to them. Okay, those of you who didn't hear, what she says, she said, uh, when she used to come here, uh, there were all kinds of programs, really good and interesting programs that she could participate in. And the food was made here in our own kitchen. The meals were great. And there was a lot of participation. And what happened to that? Um, I will tell you that right now the town uh, is not responsible at all for any of the food part of the senior center. That's off their budget. I don't know, Rob. I mean, they have food that's well. That uh, particular part of it was extremely expensive to run a kitchen. You're basically running a restaurant that served one meal a day, and there was voluntary contributions. But we did get a, a small amount of money. I think it was a dollar fifty or two dollars per meal from the county, which is which fed to the federal government, and then people were. Uh, encouraged to contribute, and always had to, because anybody could come from any community, because the federal program, it wasn't limited to Town of Sweden people, and as a rule, because we had sign-ins from where people were from, were from, about half of them were out of our town, they were from Bergen, Holly, or whatever, which is fine, uh, but the average contribution, and again, I told you I was been here 20 years, was $1.65, and it slowly went up to $1.80. And it became a point where we just couldn't afford it anymore. If you, if you had to head a, a registered cook and run a complete kitchen to serve lunches, basically a restaurant for one meal a day, which at the time too was still averaging, you know, Hanny said back in the old days it was 50, 55, but we were down to about 30 uh, 15 years ago. So it was a pretty expensive uh, proposition. And if we hadn't phased that out at that time, we wouldn't even be here tonight talking about this because uh, everything would have been gone. And I, have, and I have to give some credit to the um, association president, Louie. Um, today, we still get big crowds for certain events. And they might charge $3 for a chicken barbecue. Who picks up the rest of the tab? The association. And they've done this time after time after time. You can come and get a great meal for peanuts. And they're picking up the tab so you can afford it. Um, any other statements? We're going to have to wind up pretty soon. Yes. Yeah, you say there's, there's so many people, there's nobody shows up. And there's only, what, three bucks a meal, and nobody shows. I think a lot of people aren't real excited about the men, the, the, where the food comes from. That's what I've heard. The food is good. Well, then there should be more people. They sure come when we have uh, special events, and they pay, they pay more than they pay for the ABVI meals. It's just that the ABVI, ABVI meals aren't necessarily what they like to eat. And that's the truth. I mean, some people are okay with that, 
and it still meets the needs of a lot of people who don't cook. It's, it's, it's important. And, and I think that people who don't come to this center have to turn things around a little bit. Instead of saying, well, that place is like a nursing home, or I'm not like them, or I'm too cool for this group. Uh, did you ever think, and this is what I said to my friends who said they would never go to the senior center, I said, did it ever occur to you to go to the senior center and do something for someone else? Go to the senior center and say, hey, do you want to play cards or do you want to talk about a book or want to go for a walk or something? I mean, what, what happened to that? Chet is uh, doing this all the time, all the time. He is trying to do things to make people feel needed and wanted and cared for and sharing and appreciated. And I think that people, I don't expect all of you to come to the Senior Center, and I know a lot of you have never been here, but I bet I can get you here uh, if I have an activity that interests you, maybe not every day, maybe not for lunch, but I bet I can find something that would interest you. And that's why we, we need, if you have any ideas of activities that you would like to see here, please tell us, please tell us. Louis. Uh, I was just going to uh, say about the, uh, the meals. The meals went from a, a great kitchen to a not so great ABBI uh, yeah. supplement. And they, they have improved over the past few years. And the reason that uh, the meals don't taste like home or don't taste like, uh, you know, the uh, 58 Main Street is that ABBI has to cook for everybody. Yeah. The people that it's have like diabetes, the people that can't have uh, certain right. spices, the right. people that salt. can't salt. have salt, right. uh, and you can't have peanuts, mm -hmm. uh, and so they have to stick with that uh, regimen of, uh, of nutrition. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is seasoning here at the at the tables. I think that uh, salt is, salt and pepper is put out in the small right. little yeah. small little packets. Yeah. And also, uh, there's there's uh, one seasoning that's kind of an all seasoning that's out all the time. So the meals, the meals have improved greatly over the past couple of years, and the food the food is good, and not all of it is going to taste good to you. And you'll say, well, I'm not going to come to that again. And that's a reason for having two weeks advance, uh, as far as the food is concerned, and as far as how many people are showing up so that ABDI knows that, uh, yeah, I hope 40 people show up today because that's what we cook for, uh, uh -huh. you know, the, the senior center. I think people understand the part about reservations, but they're not happy that it has to be such a long time before that they have to make a reservation. If it could be a week even, it would be better. But. Well, it's planning, and, it's, and, and there's turnaround as far as uh, paperwork is concerned. So that's why they, I think it was a week for uh, quite some time, and they, they pumped it up to, to two weeks. Uh, we were uh, at a meeting uh, at ABDI. You went to the, Lisa went to the, yeah, you went to ABDI. And we also had one for uh, downtown. We had a meeting at downtown Rochester, right there by the, uh, in the Sibley building, right. where the downtown senior center is. Now, they get quite a few people, and this is downtown Rochester, the senior center, uh, and people go there. They, they had plenty of people. It was 9.30 in the morning, and there must have been 20 people. Well, I think that we can generate a lot more activity. I really do. And we're getting late, so we need to tie things up. Cora's going to give you a little speech. Yeah, Rob will shut me up if I go too long, because I know that we are at the point where we pretty well talked out. But what happened back in the 1980s is people in the 50s and 60s put all their energy into getting this building going, and they have stayed with it. Those people are now in their 80s and 90s. Some are deceased, 
some are in nursing homes, some are in assisted living, and a few still are good enough to be able to come here. There's one woman that was 92 that just stopped line dancing because she felt she couldn't do it anymore. So what is needed now are people in their 50s and 60s that are willing to volunteer because those that are in their 80s and 90s just don't have that same kind of energy anymore. I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love this place, but I also love the community center. And I make use of the services that I can do. I can still drive, so people that can't, one of the things I enjoy doing is taking people places that can't drive anymore. There's other people that do the same thing. But we need younger people that are still considered to be in our age group. My daughter just turned 60. She says, Mom, I'm a senior citizen now, too. So uh, Theresa is in the same age group as my children. And my grandchildren now are all in their 30s, and I finally think I'm going to become a great-grandmother. I know I need to quit because I'm getting off the subject. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is, along with the money that people have offered, which is very generous, but we also know people that are willing to volunteer. Now, our group meets every Thursday afternoon from 3 to 4.30 at the town hall. They have made that available to us. We have one of the conference rooms. We've had two guests that have come that have made great contributions. Please consider becoming part of this committee. We need all the energy and we need some younger energy in here too. Lori amazes me. She's a little bit younger than I am. But she is, she, yeah, she's, but she's, she is, has the energy of 10 people and she is the heart of this group. And her right hand person is Hanny. All right. Everybody's getting in on this now. This will be the closest. You know, when I first came here tonight, and I saw so many of you, and I'm sure for each one of you, you came because you care. You care about not just the building, but about programming. And my thought is, and I know what I passed out to each and every one of you, you should have a copy of it, are some of the things that we're thinking about. Believe it or not, at our meetings, we are so excited about getting the chance to, to go forth with this. As of today, the Sweden budget came out. It's preliminary, it's true. But in it, when we were there last night, we did find out that today, today, there is no money in that senior budget for a director. There is also no money in that budget for extending the hours back. True, I talked about what it was back then, but I also emphasized the changes that need to be made. There are those of you here that, that may not come here, but I know you're on other committees. We need more people to be involved. The budget process will go to about mid-November, and I know Lisa's here, she can probably give me the exact dates, middle of November, and then there's, uh, you know, there's a hearing for it, and unless, we, all the things that you folks have talked about, the great things that have gone on here, and the activities that draw and that don't draw, those are all great. But guess what? At this time, we need more. It's good someone offered money, but we need more of your ideas. Like I could ask you right now, what would you like to see here? What would make you and your husband come here? What make, would make you come here? The, certainly the things that are here now, we can build on. So that's the crux of things. The things that are on here, we've already talked about. Harry Shifton sent me an email today. He said, Hanny, the committee we have now, perhaps enlarge that, hit the ground running, come up with specifics. Last night we were asked at the board meeting by a member, well, how much will that cost? We're not at that point yet. We've been together a short time, but we need to come up with things like that. Do you know in Erie County, one of the programs I mentioned on here is a program that is a big partnership with the big guns, Blue Cross Blue Shield, RSVP, and the senior service of the county. Do you know at about seven, eight centers, they have classes every, almost every day this fall, and the people volunteer to talk. 
I, whether it's Ed Lehman coming up here with the woodworking he does, or maybe it's somebody else that's going to, somebody said, do they ever teach languages? Are there classes up here? Those are the ideas we need from the public that will make you come, even if it's once a week or once a month. That's all a part of it. If the board does not see that there is, there are people out here that want to come here for various things, we the committee, and some of you who would want to be on an extended committee, we want to show them here's what there is to offer. So the program that's done in Erie County could be done here. And you'll see on the different things that were listed by our committee, these are things that we thought might be something that the community is interested in. One little quick fun story. This is my ending. I was going to read what Harry said also. And please, I know it looks lengthy. Look at it, what we're already recommending about a committee. And yes, it's been said many times and received applause. We need a director. We need, we need a traffic cop that oversees the programming that can see to make this place function and, and be, make us proud like we have been. The change is needed. Here's the quick story. Yes, we need to also, as I mentioned on here, underused facility, underused, utilized programs. This place could be humming all day long. <coughs> Groups could be coming here. There are charges. In fact, my story is a true one. Even though a couple of people might think here that I, that I stretched the facts, I really didn't. I got into the bathtub this morning. The phone has been ringing all day. I just wanted five minutes of quiet. My husband comes in. He left, so I can embarrass him now. And I heard him say to the person on the phone, he said, you know, I wouldn't let her talk to anybody else, but okay. It was my grandson, Jack, from school. He's president of the junior class. Now, honestly, I said nothing about all this work that I've been involved in. But he does know he was looking for a place for their Christmas ball, which has about 100 kids in it, 110. So I'm in the tub, so he asked me, Grandma, do you think you could make some cookies for that night? I said, sure. But the point is this. His class has voted to come down here and use the facility for $300. That's some small revenue. It's not the thousand you're talking about. And I know it's been advertised in the recreation center, but without marketing and without advertising and without letting people know the type of things that are going on here, without input, I brought up at the beginning meeting a travel club. You know, Hamlin has three different uh, organizations and houses. They have travel clubs. Mike Myers came to our committee, talked about a trip he did with the uh, Recreation Center. The profit that was made was $1,000. Advertise, market. It would do good both for the Rec Center and for us. But we need, let's say we need somebody to come in here and be the liaison or head of that travel club. That's where we need people from the community. If you know of a class or something that could be held here or programs, you know, I could ask you now, what would you like to see here? What would, would, you know, what would interest you to get you to come here that maybe you can't get somewhere else? Are there any ideas or suggestions? Even, what? They're too tired. They're too tired. Let us know. But that's all I had to say. What's the next step? The next step, the next step. Uh, we have a meeting tomorrow. We have our regular meeting tomorrow. The next step uh, we had talked about that Harry Shifton brought up was to uh, perhaps expand the committee and we've got to get down to details. We have so many resources, colleges all around and different organizations that could be of help. Yeah, how can we get in touch with you? you? Okay, we didn't put the emails and things down on that sheet, uh, but, um, well. Any, anybody who's interested would be happy Come on up afterwards if you're interested. We've had it, we had it on an original handout when we were uh, for our minutes. And so that, that was that. But I have an email. Yeah. I'm listed in the phone book. What is the, okay, so you're going to continue to meet. You're going to generate ideas. Are you making a proposal yes. to the board? What you saw here is, is the, the, uh, uh, the backbone of, of our proposals. We can become more specific. But we've also made a request. This will not work if we don't have a director. This will not work if there aren't some increased hours. I mean, nine to one, even the shrubs outside are tired. It, there, there needs to be, the things that are on here we put a lot of thought into. There does need to be a revamping inside here. 
you know, a, a slight cosmetic thing. We can, I'm sure, get the paint, uh, you know, donated. Name change. The things that are on this page that we gave to one, every one of you, uh, you can take a look at it, have more ideas, come up afterwards. My, my name, Hanny Hayen. Hayen is in the phone book. I'm sure Laurie's is. The only school. The only school. Yeah. So those are ways uh, that, that you certainly can. Thanks. Guess what? Jean has one short thing and then we're out of here. This is